Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will see how to construct the finite dimensional irreducible representations of SLN plus 1 using some abstract ideas. So, these ideas actually uh, were, are very important because these ideas can be generalized to other semi-simple algebras. So, we will introduce what is called uh, this Verma modules, but before that let us see what is the motivation behind them. So, let us recall the result that we proved so far. So, if I start with lambda being dominant weight, then we constructed this V of lambda, so which is the finite dimensional highest weight representation associated with lambda, highest weight representation associated with lambda. The most important uh, properties of this V lambda, let us summarize them. So, it is generated by some single vector. So, basically it is a cyclic vector, cyclic module. So, V of lambda is generated by U G V lambda. So, G is being SLN plus 1 and then we always use the notation that we developed earlier. So, N minus will be the negative part. So, we already know that this is exactly equal to u n minus applied on this v lambda. So, then this v lambda satisfies the following properties. This v lambda has h weight lambda that means h v lambda is equal to lambda of h v lambda for all h in h. So, this is the first thing. The second thing when you take element x from n plus which is the positive part of the Lie algebra then x v lambda is equal to 0 for all x in n plus. So, these two properties are most important properties for this uh, uh, finite dimensional irreducible representations that corresponds to the dominant weight lambda. So, now one can actually just take these two important relations that are happening and then we can actually try to see whether this can be imposed, only these two relation can be imposed and then get some universal construction out of it. So, that is what actually Virma uh, thought about and then he defined some modules, cyclic modules defining using only these two relations, he, we call them as Virma modules nowadays. Okay, so, let me make very precise definition. So, maybe I will actually define a terminology called standard cyclic module associated with weight lambda. So, then uh, we will be able to actually convince, so what will be the Verma module. So, basically Verma module, the universal standard cyclic modules associated with lambdas. So, in the construction of Verma module, you can see that these two relations, so these two relation do not see anything about lambda being dominant. So, basically as long as lambda being some weight, that means it just more generally element of some h star, so that is good enough to define these two relations. So, that is why we start with element of h star. So, let us say for lambda in h star, so we want to define standard cyclic module associated with this lambda. So we call a G module capital V as a standard standard cyclic module associated with lambda if the following are satisfied. V is cyclic, so it is generated by some V, where this V must be actually weight vector corresponding to the weight lambda. So, V comes from this is non-zero vector comes from let us say V lambda. So, this is same as saying that H v is lambda of H v for all H in H. So, this is the first condition. The second condition says 
x3 is 0 for all x in n plus. If you have a cyclic module which is cyclically generated by a lambda weight vector which is actually killed by n plus action then we call that module V standard cyclic module and that vector V to be maximal vector. So, these are all the terminologies that is used by Humphreys in his book. So, we will follow those terminologies. So, we call this V is a maximal vector of course, of weight lambda. Okay. So, if you have a cyclic module satisfying these properties, then we call that module standard cyclic module which is generated by a maximal vector V. So, now we are interested in actually constructing something universal. Okay. So, how do we actually kind of take these two relations and then impose them to get a cyclic module. So, if you think about it, one way to go about it because the representations of G are in one to one correspondence with the representations of UG. So, there is no dif big difference like any representation of G can be thought of representation of UG and vice versa. So, it is enough to actually construct representation of UG, but it is not difficult to see cyclic UG modules are in one to one correspondence with left ideals of UG. Okay. So, what I mean by that, okay, here is the construction of Verma module. Of course, Verma module associated with the weight lambda. Okay. So, what, how do you construct? So, let us fix this lambda in H star. So, this is just a weight. So, then you look at this universal mapping algebra UG. So, now we are interested in constructing this cyclic module generated by some weight vector V lambda. So, then what you do? You simply take left ideal generated by the following things. So, you want the vector to have weight lambda. So, you take H minus lambda of H1. So, that that relation you impose for H in H and then you want all n plus to kill this vector. So, you take x 1 for x in n plus. So, basically you take ideal left ideal generated by this. So, then so that is your let us call call it i of lambda then your eject of lambda is defined to be this particular module. So, this is easy to see that this is indeed left G module. Okay, we are only concerned about left module. So, this is indeed G module. So, this is G module using the left multiplication action. Okay. So, it is indeed UG module. So, but UG modules are same as G modules. There is no difference. So, now using this language, you can easily see that if I call V lambda to be the image of 1 that means 1 plus i of lambda inside this z of lambda. So, then this V lambda indeed cyclic generator for this module. So, it is not hard to see this z of lambda is indeed u g of V lambda and this V lambda satisfies the following property H V lambda is same as lambda of H V lambda and then x V lambda is 0 and this is true for all h in h star sorry all h in h and then this is true for all x in n plus. So, these two relations are satisfied. So, we got the standard cyclic module associated with the weight lambda. So, now it is easy exercise if we take any other standard cyclic module associated with the weight lambda that must be a quotient of this jet of lambda. Okay. Suppose V is standard cyclic module generated by a weight vector V of weight lambda. So, then it is easy to see that 
you have a surjection from z of lambda to v as a g map. Okay, you just simply send v lambda to v, then that actually defines a map from z lambda to this v and it is a surjective map. Okay. So, that is why we are calling this z of lambda as the universal standard cyclic module. So, but in the literature, they are also called Verma modules. Okay. This is indeed universal standard cyclic module because Verma introduced in his thesis, so we call them Verma modules. So, now uh, once we define this standard cyclic module, then the following uh, properties are immediate. So, let me actually state them. Okay. So, here is the proportion. So, let V be a standard cyclic module. corresponding to let us say lambda, weight lambda. So, now note that lambda is being just uh, some element of H star, not necessarily a weight or not necessarily actually uh, dominant weight. Okay. So, for us weight is capital lambda that is the eject linear span of omega i's where omega is fundamental weights. So, in, in general like one can call elements of H star also weights, there is no confusion. So, now you can easily see that uh, this capital V has the following property. The first property is V is indeed spanned by this U n minus acting on V lambda. So, if you use P B W basis, then it is exactly equal to some Y beta 1 R 1 etcetera Y beta n R n applied on V lambda where R 1 etcetera R n they are all non negative integers. Note that this beta 1 etcetera beta n so they are ordered tuple okay, ordered positive roots. So, that is the notation we have been using and this Y beta is indeed is the is the span of this uh, basis element of this g beta. So, this is inside g beta. So, indeed g beta is span of y beta. So, this is the notation that we are using. So, now it is clear that if I start with v lambda which has the weight lambda, if you apply keep applying this y beta, then the weight of that will go down by that corresponding beta i's. Okay. So, in particularly the weight of capital V is contained in lambda minus R 1 beta 1 plus etcetera plus R n beta n, where R 1 etcetera R n they are all non negative integers. And note that this is same as saying this is actually exactly equal to if you write it in terms of simple roots which is alpha i's, then this is exactly lambda minus q plus, where q plus is nothing but z plus span of alpha i's, where I range from 1 to n. So, this is the behavior that actually uh, you have it for the irreducible modules. Okay. Same behavior is actually uh, is there for standard cyclic modules. So, now it is easy to see that for any mu in this weight of V, we have the dimension of V mu is finite. So, that is because, so the dimension of V mu can be calculated using the basis that comes from this panic set, where we have this y beta 1 power r 1 etcetera y beta n power r n dot v lambda. So, because of that we can easily see that there will be a spanning set theoretically coming from 
these PBW type bases applied on V lambda, okay. So, in particularly what will be V mu? V mu is going to be span of y beta 1 power r 1 etcetera y beta n power r n applied on V lambda where you can restrict this r 1 etcetera r n which are non-negative integers such that this lambda minus r 1 beta 1 plus etcetera plus r n beta n. So, this is the corresponding weight of this word. So, that should be exactly equal to mu, okay. So, this vector has this weight. So, once the vector uh, weight matches with mu, then you can take those element and then span it, then you get V mu. And this number, okay, the number of tuples, so the number of tuples R1, etc., Rn such that lambda minus mu equal to r 1 beta 1 plus etcetera plus r n beta n. So, this number is indeed finite. So, because of that we can see that dimension v mu must be finite, okay. So, this is just com comes from some general observation. So, now if you actually consider other uh, weights, okay. So, you can see that the only weights that actually can survive that should be smaller than lambda. So, so what will happen to other weights, okay. If, if I take the, if I take this space, okay, let us look at this dimension. So, the dimension of V mu, so this is going to be 0 if mu is not less than lambda. So, that is for sure. And if I take dimension of V lambda, which is the top width space, then again you can easily see that. So, this lambda minus mu has to be 0 that forces that because R1, etc., Rn, they are all non negative integers and beta is are all positive roots. So, that forces that this Ri should be 0. So, that means there is only one tuple which is 0, 0, 0 corresponding to lambda width space. So, that forces that this dimension of V lambda is 1. Okay. So, these two observations are immediate again from this spanning set. Okay. So, now this also tells, so you do not have like uh, any other, the top weight space is just one dimensional. So, you cannot have really any other thing in the top one, one top space, lambda space. Okay, so now uh, let us look at this V as a G module. So what it is? Okay. So if you think about it, it is indeed indecomposable module. So V must be indecomposable G module. So why that is the case? So let us just uh, prove that here. If I take V and then if I write it as some V dash direction V double dash, then for sure the lambda weight space should be again factor into V dash lambda direction V double dash lambda. But we already know that the dimension of V lambda must be 1. So, that forces that either V dash lambda is 0 or V double dash lambda is 0. If one of them is 0, the other one will be exactly V lambda. For example, without loss of generality, assume that V double dash lambda is 0, then that would force that V lambda equal to V dash lambda. So, in that case, what will happen? So, in that case, that V lambda, which is a generator, small V lambda, that is going to lie inside V lambda dash. If the generator lies and it is because it is a cyclic module, so the entire module should appear inside V lambda dash, sorry V dash. So, that forces that this complement space of V dash, V double dash that must be 0. So, that proves that V must be indecomposable G module. So, now uh, it is the standard uh, fact, okay, because the carton being, okay, so all the elements of the carton commutes and V being a H weight module. So, if you take any other sub module of V, 
okay suppose v dash is a sub module of v g sub module so then we can talk about the action of h restricted to v dash now with respect to that you can again see that this v dash will be h weight module and the decomposition of v dash into weight spaces will be very explicit if we know the decomposition of v as weight spaces. So, basically v dash will be equal to direction of v dash intersection v mu where mu runs over all weight of v. Okay. And this also tells you immediately that the weight of v dash must be contained in weight of v. Okay. And this is very standard fact, I will leave it as exercise. So, now from this you can see that this v dash, the weight spaces of v dash are also finite dimensional. Okay. And the weight of v dash is also contained in the cone lambda minus q plus. So, basically the lambda is the top weight. So, this is lambda and all other weights, they all kind of lie in the below lambda in the cone that is actually bounded above by lambda. Okay. So, now we can actually observe the following. So, if I if I know this fact that any G sub module is indeed weight module, then we can actually talk about uh, weight decomposition of that any sub modules. So, now if I take uh, this uh, maximal sub module, okay, so which is actually let us define it to be the sum of all proper G sub modules of z lambda. Let us call it m lambda. So, we claim that this must be a proper sub module. Okay. The claim is that this m of lambda is indeed proper sub module of z lambda. So, once we know this is actually proper sub module, then it is immediate that this m of lambda must be the unique maximal sub module. Okay. This implies immediately m of lambda is the unique maximal sub module G sub module of z lambda. And this maximal with respect to the inclusion order, okay. inclusion you take it to be the partial order and uh, this comparison is with respect to the inclusion. Now, why this claim is true? So, just look at this uh, lambda th weight space of this m lambda because m lambda can be written as direct sum of weight spaces. So, because the sum of sub modules will be sub module. Okay. So, then look at this lambda th weight space because this lambda th weight space is contained in the lambda th weight space of this v. Okay, I wanted to write here v lambda v. So, you take the sum of all proper sub modules, let us introduce this m v of lambda of v. So, we are saying that that is actually proper because I am considering general standard cyclic module. So, I will just uh, stick with that. So, here I will write capital V. So, this m v of this. So, if you look at this m, m of lambda, uh, of uh, the lambda th weight space of this m of lambda. So, that is going to contain in v lambda and the dimension of v lambda is being 1. So, this tells you that if m of lambda lambda is non-zero, so then this v lambda must be equal to m v of lambda lambda. But that is a contradiction because then that would force that this v lambda is inside m v of lambda then that will force that this v lambda is inside some proper like sub module. Okay. So, then this v lambda must be inside some proper sub module because this m v of lambda being sum of all proper sub module. If you take any 
proper G sub module, then the lambda weight space of that must be 0. So, then if you look at this MV of lambda which is the sum of all proper G sub modules, then there again lambda weight space must be 0, there is no other option. Okay. So, this force that this uh, m of m v of lambda is lambda weight space is 0. So, because the lambda weight space is missed, so that means this m v of lambda must be a proper sub module. And since it is it is all the sum of g sub modules, proper g sub modules, so it must be the ma unique maximal g sub module, there is no other option. So, now we can actually define this v lambda. Okay, note that I am using the same notation. So, there is no confusion here because now lambda being some element of h star, we are defining this v lambda. So, when lambda is dominant, we will actually prove that v lambda must be finite dimensional irreducible module. Then it must be, we already proved that there is only one highest weight representation associated with lambda okay, of finite dimensional irreducible highest weight representation associated with lambda. So, that means this will when lambda is dominant it will coincide with or iso, it will become isomorphic to the module that we constructed before. Okay. So, that should not lead to any, any confusion. So, now you take this V lambda to be. Okay. So, you, you can see that the ejet of lambda is al also standard cyclic module, cyclic uh, module associated with the weight lambda. So, then we can actually take this m ejet of lambda lambda, so to be m lambda. Okay. So, then v of lambda is defined to be ejet of lambda modulo this m lambda. Okay, that is the definition of our irreducible module associated with the weight lambda. So, it is a standard module, okay, standard cyclic module which is also irreducible. So, now, so, so this module okay, that is what we are calling it as uh, V lambda. So, note that this is uh, standard cyclic plus irreducible module of course, corresponding to lambda. Okay. So, we have given lambda 1 irreducible cyclic module. Okay. So, now you may ask actually like are there any, any more like standard cyclic irreducible modules because this observation that we made about uh, general standard cyclic module tells you that if I start with any standard cyclic module corresponding to lambda, then that must contain unique maximal uh, sub module. Then we can go modulo that and then we can produce irreducible module. Okay, That also going to be standard cyclic module, but it is not hard to prove. So, any two standard cyclic module any two standard cyclic module which is also irreducible. So, that that will be actually isomorphic to each other. So, maybe like the proof of this exactly follows the proof that we did for okay, any V lambda and uh, uh, any two irreducible modules corresponding to high straight representations corresponding to lambda will be isomorphic to. So, same proof that you can actually use here and then uh, prove the uh, prove this result. So, what is the exercise? Let us say V and W be two standard cyclic irreducible modules of course, corresponding to the weight lambda. So, then V is isomorphic to W. Okay, there is no other option. So, that means if you start with any standard cyclic module and then take the corresponding irreducible quotient, okay, they are all like will be isomorphic to each other. So, that is why we will be only focusing on 
this particular quotient. So, which which we call it uh, the standard cyclic irreducible module. Okay. So, this is the standard cyclic irreducible module corresponding to lambda. So, this is the model that we will be always working with. Okay. So, what is the hint here? The hint is you take again V direct sum W. Look at this V W where V and W are generators of V and W respectively. Then look at cyclic module generated by this. Then you can prove this is again standard cyclic. Okay. Then if you call this as U, then from U to V you have this natural projection and then u to w you have the natural projection you use those projection and then see like what you get okay so now uh, we will be only focusing on uh, these uh, v lambdas so we are going to actually prove this big theorem so which i will state it now and then we will see the proof later so V of lambda, which we define to be eject lambda modulo m of lambda. Okay, this is our definition. This is finite dimensional if and only if lambda is dominant. So, in particularly whenever lambda dominant, so V lambda becomes finite dimensional irreducible module and it is naturally isomorphic to the module that we constructed earlier. So, we do not have any confusion of calling it again V lambda. Okay, so, this is the theorem that we want to prove and we will prove this uh, step by step. I will stop here, we will continue in the next class the proof of this theorem. Thank you.